Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Now, if you're a regular on the channel, you might have heard me give the advice of how you should make small games. Depending on the level of experience, I recommend you make one month to six month games. I would really only recommend spending over a year on a game if you're already very experienced. And I would pretty much almost never recommend spending over two years on a single game. That's my advice based on my experience of making Steam games for over 10 years and really analyzing how Steam works. Based on all the research that I do, based on studying the Steam new releases, based on marketing, based on all the game dev content that I study all the time, based on all of that, I have found that spending too long on a project actually has more cons and pros, that's why that's my advice. Small games help you gain experience quite a lot faster, they help you learn more, faster, and they actually help you increase your odds of finding success. You'll learn so much more by making four games in two years than by making a single game in those same two years. And as a beginner, you'll learn infinitely more by making a bunch of small one-week games as opposed to spending multiple months on a single thing. One of the things that I think really helped me was how I sort of unintentionally did this. I spent five years making Flash games, and Flash games were inherently small. So in those five years, I make 40 games. That's 4-0. Doing that gave me a ton of experience. It allowed me to experiment with tons of genres and all kinds of different games. So I made shooters, strategy games, casual games. I made management games, RPGs, racing games, and a ton more. Exploring all of that really gave me a ton of knowledge and very quickly. It was only after five years of making Flash games that I finally fully transitioned into making PC games for Steam, and then I spent almost one year working on my single first Steam game. So my advice of make small games, that advice is very much based on everything that I know, everything that I've experienced. I really do believe you should be making small games, especially if you're in the beginner or intermediate stage. But I have seen some comments that disagree with that advice, and they usually point out two specific problems with this advice. Recently, there was a post on Reddit that equated making small games with killing your dreams. And one of my videos, there was a comment that basically equated making small games with making Space Invader clones. So here, let me clarify some things on who this advice applies to. So maybe it applies to you, maybe not. And what this advice actually means. First of all, there's actually one extremely important question you need to ask yourself. I made an entire video on this topic, on how you can make games just for fun and nothing else. So when it comes to whether this advice is applicable or not, it is very, very important for you to answer for yourself whether you're making games with the goal of taking it seriously and potentially making a living, or if you're making games purely as a hobby just for fun. There's no wrong answer here, both options are perfectly valid. You can make games for fun, or you can make games to try to make them professionally. Both options are fine, it's really up to you to decide for yourself what it is that you want. And if you decide that you're making games just for fun, if so, then there are really no wrong answers. There are no rules you need to follow, you can do whatever you want. If you want to spend 10 years making a single game, then go for it. If you want to make yet another puzzle platformer, then go for it. If you want to completely ignore marketing and gathering wish lists, then yep, go for it. If the goal is merely as a hobby just for fun, if so, then as long as you're having fun, then nothing else matters. As long as you're having fun, you are successfully achieving your goal. Now for me, making games and teaching game development is my actual job, so I don't do this for fun, I do it professionally. Making games has been my job, and it has been the main way that I make a living for over 10 years now. I also made an interesting video on that same topic, how I survived this long and made over a million dollars without having a single hit. So for me, game dev is indeed a job. This is my profession, which means I have to take it seriously. I don't do it for fun. So for me, for this topic, for my point of comparison, for me, it's fitness, which is my main hobby. For me, fitness is just for enjoyment. I go to the gym for fun. I have no desire of winning Mr. Olympia. If that were my goal, then I would definitely need to do things quite a lot differently. If I wanted to do fitness for a living, then I would need to track my weights perfectly. I would need to take some extra supplements. I would need to track my macros with 100% accuracy. I would need to be 100% on point of nutrition without any days that fail. But again, that is not my goal. So since for me it's a hobby that I do just for fun, because of that, I do track my weights, I do try to keep some decent nutrition, but only semi-casually. Definitely not with the seriousness that I would need if I was trying to make it into an actual job. So when it comes to games, it's very much the same thing. If it's a hobby for you, if so, and you're doing it just for fun, then there's no wrong answer. Just do whatever you enjoy and don't worry about listening to any advice. You can spend 10 years making your next dream game, and as long as you're having fun, then you're doing everything that matters. However, if your goal is to take it seriously, if your goal is to potentially one day make a living from your games, if that's your goal, then yes, I would very much advise you to do things properly, listen to advice from people that have achieved what you want to achieve, and my best advice would indeed be make small games. For complete beginners, I would say don't spend more than two weeks working on a single game idea. As a complete beginner, you will hopefully learn quite a lot and learn very quickly. So if you're actively learning, then two weeks after, your skill set should be leaps and bounds much better than it was two weeks ago. So during that stage, that very beginner stage, completing quick projects and then starting a new project from scratch, that will help you iterate upon your skill set much, much faster. And then as you grow your skills, then you can increase the amount of time that you spend in your games. 
So you can make a one month game, a three month game, then a six month game. And for more experienced devs, I would pretty much always recommend you stick within that six months to one year game. I think that is a really great sweet spot. I would only advise you to go longer if you have very clear proof that your game is in very high demand amongst players. If after one year of development, you think you can improve it quite significantly by another six months, if you think that, and you have something like 30 to 50,000 wishlists, then I would say yes, you have validated that people really want the game, so in that case, it might indeed pay off to spend an extra amount of time making the game the best it can be. But even if you have tons of wishlists, I would definitely not recommend you go past the two-year mark. The issue is simply that time is not free. Again, going back to who this advice applies to, it is if you're trying to make it and hopefully making a living from your games, meaning hopefully turn profit, you have expenses. The longer you spend working on your game, the more expense you have and the more money you need in order to break even. So if your expenses are something like 2k per month and you spend 6 months making a game, then you just need 12k to turn a profit. But if instead you spend 2 years, then now you need almost 50k to break even. That is definitely quite difficult to get. You can look for example on this website to see the rough revenue distribution. And you can see down here, here we have the nice revenue by percentile. So if you need 10k to break even, you need to be around this, so in between 20 and 25%. So let's say your game needs to be on the top 22% of Steam. Whereas if you need 50k to break even, if so, then you need to be, let's say, on about the 12%. And if you need 100k+, plus, like if you spend over 5 years working on your game, if so, then your game needs to be on the top 5% of Steam in order to break even. Now, if you are skilled, you can likely make a game that can generate 10k in revenue. Making 50k, that becomes quite a bit tricky, and making over 100k, that becomes a serious effort. Then, one very big thing is what defines how much money your game can make. Usually, the most important thing is actually the concept. Marketing starts on the game idea itself. Some ideas just sound better than others. One good idea is always going to sell quite a lot more than one mediocre idea with a ton of content. So essentially content is very, very rarely going to be the thing that takes your game from selling 10k to selling 100k. So the game idea itself is much more valuable than tons and tons of content. If you spend two years making just one game, then you can really just attempt one game idea. Whereas if you make four games in those same two years, then you have essentially four chances of finding success, four chances of experimenting with different ideas, and maybe one of those will hit it very well with the same audience. So that is why the six month to one year is sort of the indie sweet spot. It is a great amount of time to make something really good and validated. If it fails, then you don't really lose too much. With a short enough timeline, then the odds of finding success and turning a profit are quite a bit higher than if you spend multiple years working on that same game. Now that one Reddit comment that I mentioned, that one equated making small games with killing your dreams. Now I really disagree with this. There are very, very few games that require multiple years of development, or rather very few games that you just cannot cut the scope at all. Very, very few games like that. For example, if your goal is to make GTA 5 by yourself, then yeah, that would definitely take multiple years. You can't really build an indie GTA 5 in six months. If that really is your dream game, then I would definitely encourage you to take that game idea and cut it down to the absolute bare essentials to something that is actually realistic to do. So for example, you can still make something like GTA, but maybe have just 20 missions as opposed to trying to make 100. Maybe just have 20 cars instead of 500. Maybe just a small town map instead of a giant metropolis. So whatever your dream game is, you can definitely play around the scale to make something that is actually doable. And this actually brings me to the other argument that I've seen, basically how people think that making small games means making just a Space Invaders clone or a Flight Bird clone or something like that. Once again, that is really not true. Six months is a ton of time. You can build a massive game in that amount of time. One very clear example is actually my own experience. My last game, Dinky Gardens, is actually a pretty massive game. It's a factory, automation, colony building, management, tower defense game. Lots of features, lots of mechanics, lots of content. And the whole thing was built in just seven months. One thing that people definitely overlook is how speed and scale that is very much dependent on your skill set. I absolutely could not have built this game in seven months, ten years ago when I had very little experience. Back then, this game idea would have definitely taken me two years at the very least. So if the game ideas that you think are doable in six months are just tiny, tiny ideas, if so, then really that just means that you are currently very inexperienced. And that's fine, that's perfectly normal. Basically, as you improve your skills, you improve the amount of things that you can actually build on the exact same time frame. As you improve your skills, you improve your productivity. For example, the first time that you make a health system, chances are it probably took you over a week and it's not really going to be very good. Whereas, I can definitely say for myself right now, I can build a very robust, very well-built health system in literally just a few minutes. That really is the power of experience. Things that used to take you multiple weeks can then suddenly take you just hours. So that's how in the beginning, in six months, you might only be able to make a game like Flappy Bird, but later on, with enough experience, with six months, you can make a really complex, really awesome game. So basically, don't think that six months games have to be tiny. You can make something very interesting, very robust, 
you can definitely explore lots of very interesting ideas as long as you have the skills to support them. And if you don't have those skills, then my advice on making small games is even better. Make small games, make multiple games very quickly in order to iterate upon your skill set, in order to gain more experience, and then soon enough you reach a point where you're actually productive enough that your dream game ideas can be built in 6 months to 1 year. So if I really just wanted to clarify my own advice in a bit more detail, I really believe this is the best way to learn, I believe this is the best way to potentially find success, so I will definitely keep repeating and keep giving this advice. If you're making games as a professional, then I hope you take this advice and I hope it helps you find success. But if you're making games as a hobby just for fun, if so, then I hope you do whatever you want to do and just have fun. Check out these two videos where I talk more about this topic and my own journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.